introduced to the cigarette. Cat killer killed my cat. Cat killer, the total crap. Cat killer, the project. The Fringe Festival has once again taken over the city center. Our Lisa Best cornered one of the key players of this eclectic event. First, the man we all want to talk to. Executive producer incoming for the Fringe Fest. Uh, you know you hate when I ask you this. You got a best pick yet? I don't have a best pick yet, Lisa. I think they're all You're never best picks at this you? point. No, I might, I might, you never know. You know what, the best pick is the outdoor stage this year is the best pick. It's got some really hot entertainment. As you can see tonight, you got like six or 700 people here on the square. That's you've, got, you've got music coming in too, right? Okay. We've got all sorts of great bands. Actually, tonight we've got Spur of the Moment, we've got Chains on 20, we've got the Blue Meanies. It's a great free concert. And tomorrow night, Saturday night, we've got uh, the Kings of the Moon, which are a really great new band. Almost everyone in the square has something to sing about, and they all have a show to sell. Sad Surgeon. By Chris Cow. At Venue 4, the Planetarium, 190 Rupert Avenue, air conditioned. A wonky play. Smartly performed, Ronald Starr. To learn the truth about JFK's assassination, please press A People's History of the Yukon. Hi, we're Ben Sports, and on behalf of our group, we only have one thing to say to you all. Get Ben! Yes, they will stand on their heads for your business, and competition is fierce. Occasionally, a fringe fight even breaks out. It's better than a kick in the head. Literally. It's better than a kick in the head. That's what they call themselves. It's called White Bronco, and you know what? They're always entertaining and ready to do something for us right now. And we're ready. Tom Mary here. I would like to present Better Than a Kick in the Head's production of the Toilet Paper Dances, as translated by our janitor, Hogi Kalnikov. The young man awakens in terror, but gazes up at his love. And they dance. All right. Thank you. And as you can see, most of the performances are put here on the board of the outdoor stage in Old Market Square. So it's pretty foolproof if you want to catch a show, just check out the board down here. The entertainment in Old Market Square goes till about midnight. It's going to be a lot of fun, and of course, it's wacky. That's Nightlife. We'll see you on the fringe. Run around here. Be there. Oh, we're coming to get you. Not a lot of introverted people down there. Let's see how long she can hold that for. New Voices Opera Company is coming up next live on Lombard. Keep going, keep going. And see if our opera singer is still holding that note or not. Kim. Maybe not. <laughs> she did stop a little while ago, but she almost made it, Rob, to five seconds before we went on. Some people actually are fringed out from the weekend already. Some people are just beginning their fringe journey. But nonetheless, the eighth annual fringe festival is now there for the taking. The one that represents all that is evil. You are the great four. <laughs> Members of 87 different local and out-of-town performing companies marched into the Fringe Zone this weekend to begin the alternative theater journey. For the next 10 days, there will be 600 shows in eight venues in downtown Winnipeg, ranging in price from five to eight dollars. Theater, it's a smorgasbord. Anything goes. We don't pre-screen anything. We don't know what these artists are going to do. We invite them to Winnipeg to do their art, and they do it marvelously. And here today on Lombard, just what you wanted to see at the Fringe, opera. Then this isn't just opera for opera lovers. This is also opera for not-so-opera lovers. New Voices Company, take it away. We are the New Voices Opera Company. In this scene, Miss Todd, founder of the Prohibition Committee, strives to keep her love for Bob the Beautiful Beggar alive by raiding the local liquor store. Look to your left, look to your right, nobody in sight. Don't walk in sight! Let me try it! Push! 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 Let us crawl in. How many kinds of bottles, how many ways of committing the two sins? That must keep people's stomachs have more imagination than most people's brains. Versus my favorite sin has variety. 
I heard a noise. That's the part of the city traffic. It isn't. It's dead. Don't raise your voice. Let's make our choice. I guess somebody out there didn't like opera. <laughs> well, come here. Come over here, Shannon. Shannon is the founder of New Voices Opera Company. It founded, what, two years ago? Two years ago, yes. We started up for the Fringe Festival. Ah, okay. Right. Now, tell me how many people are in this troupe, and where do they all come from? Okay, we have a couple of people that were students at the U of M School of Music. We have Marcia Whitehead, Fran Farrell, who you saw today, as well as Carla Hayes, and Jeff Melanchthon, who are all graduate students School of Music program. And our stage manager is Lisa Dube. Our accompanist and musical director is Laura Lowen, who has studied at McGill University. So how do you persuade all these people to come in and make fun of the thing that they do seriously? Well, we promise them fame and fortune and, of course, <laughs> a good time. <laughs> and that they just got here on MTN. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, now, um, why did you form this in the first place two years ago? I wanted to give a venue for young singers like myself to come together and do what we love doing, which is opera, and have a good time doing it and making it accessible for everybody to see why it is we love it so much. Okay, so you don't have to be a big connoisseur of opera to be able to enjoy the show. I say dare to come out and try something new. Okay. And people can actually get a laugh out of it, even if they, you know, don't know the big opera. I promise it. Okay. Okay, okay. wonderful. And you're in venues all all week. Uh, which venue are you We're in? We're in the Warehouse Theatre. Warehouse Theatre. All this week. And you have to check your Fringe program to get all the details. Okay, thanks Thank a lot, you. ladies. One more, one more uh, note for the road. recovers the mirror with a black fabric veil. He moves to Ruby's chair. Sit. Will crosses to Richard's chair and sit. Ruby has his eyes closed. Reach out. Richard adjusts his underwear. Ruth adjusts her underwear. Former writer Adina Sumter Freetag's personal account of growing up as a black girl in Winnipeg's North End. The show is pretty powerful stuff. I saw a few shows this weekend, and my day's recommendation has to be Brave New Weasels, Four Weasels in a Funeral. Very clever sketches. Um, strong troupe of four, uh, individually and together, and uh, they kept me very thoroughly amused. I laughed a lot. <laughs> and another festival that took place this weekend, even fringer than the Fringe Festival, Core Fest was a tiny little three-day concert featuring close to 40 local bands and a lot of spirit. Freedom from cell phones. Freedom from rock stars and corporations. And that uh, cover charge. It's a personal challenge, but it's it's for people. It's for it's for the kids. It's for the bands in the cities. I mean, you know, even for this city, <laughs> I guess. You know, yeah. It's, it's for the uh, the scene in general, the independent music, uh, undercutting the industry, the commercial, whatever. Yeah. It's this ginger pinata stuck full of wieners and M&M. Feel free to break dance. Like when you do something for so long, you, you got to
to be doing it for a reason. Like otherwise, we're completely insane. And <laughs> and so it's sort of like everybody here is because are here because they want to be playing music to people, not for any other reason. What a fun time. It was a great weekend. Went off without a hitch, except for these Sunday evening showers. And there's very few music festivals this year. I don't think there's any music festivals anymore that you can actually go to that they have no cover charge whatsoever. So we'll look forward to next year's Core Fest. And you can also get a Core Fest CD compilation in stores uh, if you're interested in extending the weekend. And a quick note, country artist Boy Howdy does two gigs tonight at Silverado's, 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. And I have two pairs of tickets to give away right now for Rainbow Stages, Oklahoma. It opens tomorrow. And all you have to do is name me a song from the show, Oklahoma, except besides the song, Oklahoma. And that's at 947-9613. And I've heard some wild rumors that uh, Jesse here, who's floor directing, is actually a wonderful opera singer. A note for the road, Jesse? Okay, well, I'll give a note, and Rob, if you don't mind joining in, okay? Oh. If Jeff's not doing it, I'm not doing Hi. it. Hi, my name's Rainer. Uh, my show is called Was God British? It's in Son of Warehouse. I'm not actually entirely uh, British myself. I'm half German. Uh, half Welcome back. The Fringe Festival is back in town, and Robert Enright is trying to pack in as many shows as possible. There's one show he really likes, though, but just a warning, the content may not be for everyone's taste. Performance in progress, John, as you can see, so I'm being very quiet, talking outside like a kind of voyeur outside Cinematheque, which is one of the eight venues here at the Fringe Festival this year. I want to recommend another piece, a one-hour-long stand-up comedy routine by Rainer Hirsch from London, England, which is very funny and is called Was God British? Here's a sample of his humor. I'm not actually British, I'm half German, half English, uh, which means that I'd like to take over the world, but I'm too polite. It's not entirely about God, uh, not in a place as religious as Winnipeg. Uh, the other day, I bumped into a Buddhist on Main Street. He said, do you believe in reincarnation? I said, <laughs> not you again. Quick joke for the Jehovah's Witnesses. What's the difference between a Jehovah's Witness and a car made in Britain? <laughs> you can shut the door on a Jehovah's Witness. Great to be here in uh, uh, Canada. I love all parts of the country. I went to Montreal. Strange thing, Burger King in Montreal, all the people who work there have to be bilingual. Bilingual in Burger King. Have you been to Burger King anywhere else recently? <laughs> They're not even lingual. Have you ever asked yourself why they've got pictures near the prices of the food? Yeah, exactly. And I come from Great Britain. Uh, I know that irritates some of my Canadian fans, but uh, I'd like to point out to them that that is the same great as in Great War, Great Play, Great Depression, Great White Shark, Great Cultural Revolution, Great Hits of the 70s. It's a bleeding jinx! John, you know, you can catch Was God British, let's see, tomorrow night at 9.30 at Venue 5, which is Son of Warehouse. Very funny piece indeed. Thanks, Robert. And Robert will have reports on the fringe... And finally tonight, Winnipeg is the place to be if you like drama, dance, or comedy. Over the next week, Winnipeg Fringe Festival is on at various venues around the city, and Channel 5 photographer John Schneider has a small sample of what to expect at this year's festival. Fringe your face off. Winnipeg's 8th Annual Fringe Festival is well underway with everything from drama and comedy to the experimental. We've got entertainers from around the world, from here from Winnipeg, and we've got uh, groups nationally and from the U.S., from uh, England, from France, and from Australia, having shows that are dramas, shows that are comedy, some dance, some uh, mime, jugglers, all sorts of great stuff. Because you guys are so good at walking out to anyone you don't deem as worthy. I've never been like that. The, the play is, it's, uh, it's um, a collection of vignettes dealing with, I, I guess, dating and the romance life. Uh, most of it seems to be with being jilted. Um, but uh, we, what it is is you just see different, um, different concepts of what love is to different people and how different people see love. I'm not too keen writing about poverty and degradation and unemployment and despair, but I'm not writing about cancer. No cancer. That's out.
Ordinary Days is about a playwright who's having a lot of trouble writing a funny play, and he'd really like to write a funny play. Now, I am a playwright, and I'd really like to write a funny play. And the difference is, I'm acting the playwright. This is my acting debut. I'm acting the playwright uh, who's trying to write a funny play. Uh, yeah, it's funny about your own life, you know. The, you're always trying to do things right, and things never work out. And I think people leave here saying, yeah, I'm a lot like that guy. And that's what live theater is all about. Uh, live theater can make you really feel like you were talking to other people. He's mine, Bonda. You brought him. She brought him. I'm my own boss. The group's from Wolverhampton uh, in the West Midlands in England. And it tells the story, partly historical, of what happened to Bodicea and her two daughters. And it also looks at them looking back after death at the consequences of their involvement in war and rape and torture and all sorts of terrible things. But we've used the after-death experience to try to get some comedy into the show. So it's not all doom and gloom. Some of it's funny, some of it's sharp, we hope, and ironic. John Schneider, Channel 5 News. Well, we start off with a 41-year-old summer music tradition that is about to begin its run. Dig up your Stetson because the musical Oklahoma opens tomorrow night. This was actually one of the number one choices for Winnipeg audiences on a survey that Rainbow Stage did, did last summer. And uh, I think that the audiences are going to be very surprised when they walk in and see what we've done, not only with the stage, but with the show. Wonderful talent, great cast, large cast. We have about 50 uh, performers in the, in, in the show this year. reminder that all the cast, 50 cast members of Oklahoma, with the exception of two, are Manitobans. They have that classic rainbow stage energy, and they're under a new roof, one that guarantees no rain leaking on your head. The mosquitoes aren't even so bad out there this season. So there you go. It opens tomorrow night. It runs until August 13th. And of course, Rainbow's main competition for uh, their opening week is the Fringe Festival. Here's a couple of shows for your Fringe perusal. My mom's got a father there, all right? And she beat him all the way home before embarrassing him. And then she stood him up in front of the mirror and said, Boy, I want you to look in that mirror and tell me what nationality you are. You are the same nationality as all of them people. You are not German, you are colored. And don't you ever forget it. It is within the realm of extreme possibility that their hands are attached to the body differently to allow for such an angle of strangulation. Or maybe they just have two elbows. Malta, look. You're really cute when you... Stop it. When you say the realm of extreme possibility, this is your stupidest theory to date. Why do you have to be such a f***ing skeptic, Scuttlebutt? I'm sorry. Where are you going? The requisition of car. Mulder and Scuttlebutt. Resemblance to Fox Mulder a little bit, and even... Uh, Scully uh, looks a little bit like Scully, a uh, skinnier Scully. <laughs> that show, uh, before it was performer writer Adina Sumter Freetag's personal account of what it was like growing up as a black girl in Winnipeg's North End. This show is a very powerful one woman show. I came here to uh, see the apartments, but they don't play till later on, so uh, little Joe and Friends looks kind of interesting. Later in the week, we're going to see uh, Six Toed Sophie, The S Files, The Watchdog. It was really good. Saw it this afternoon. Affecting the Wolf, um, just because it's about Virginia Wolf, that's why I want to see that one. And, um, yeah, those are my must-sees. And uh, other than that, then I'll throw in a few sort of potluck ones. <laughs> it was the rehearsal in 15-minute Hamlet, and it was a great group of players, 
Uh, and it, it was just totally silly. It was farcical and, uh, you know, the best Hamlet you could have. Well, I would suggest Star Trek Live just because I like sideburns and saurian brandy and maybe some green women that live on a planet. Um, if you've ever, if you ever dated green women, they're, they're different from Earth women because they, uh, they like sideburns and saurian brandy. So come to Star Trek Live where all this week at the Warehouse Theater. Be there or don't even go to the French. In other entertainment with Ross Mason. Call it another roadside attraction, right, Kim? Yes, I was at another roadside attraction. Now I'm here live on Lombard with the Brave New Weasels. They're warming up for their musical debut here live on Lombard. It's going to be great coming up next. Okay, okay, guys, you keep warming up. We'll be with you in a second. Well, we're all another roadside attraction has hit Winnipeg. The Cross Canada Tour features the Tragically Hip and seven of their favorite bands. Winnipeg's biggest summer concert started about three hours ago, and it'll go into the late hours of tonight. With, with the tragic in the hip outside, um, we think is a natural. So, you know, they, they put together the group of, of their friends that they wanted to invite on the stage. You add the hippie village, you look for unique sites that you can have a, a different kind of perspective, give people a different experience when they come to a show. They're not here with an usher looking for a seat or being told to be quiet or to sit down. There's freedom, you can relax and have fun. And you Perfect day for it. It's not too bad of a venue. Great sight lines. There's no grass to sit on, but uh, once the music gets going, you won't care. The atmosphere is great, and the bands are very satisfied. You can tell by, by the way they, you know, get on stage and do their thing the best way they can. There's still tickets if you want to make their your way to the Cinnaboyan Downs tonight. Blues Traveler is on about now. Then there's Spirit of the West, followed by Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers, and then of course the Hip. And a 41-year-old summer music tradition starts its run tonight. Dig up your steps in because the musical Oklahoma opens. This was actually one of the number one choices for Winnipeg audiences on a survey that Rainbow Stage did, did last summer. And uh, I think that the audiences are going to be very surprised when they walk in and see what we've done, not only with the stage, but with the show. Wonderful talent, great cast, large cast. We have about 50 uh, performers in the, in, in the show this year. working on it guys we'll be to you in a second and of course the rainbow stage's main competition for this week is the opening of or is actually the fringe festival here's a couple of shows for your fringe perusal my name is persephone and i'm a fallen woman i've been a fallen woman for a few thousand years now this is my third meeting of fallen women anonymous it's nice to see so many familiar faces here tonight. Pandora, hi! Medusa, nice do. St. Joan, Matahari. Oh, Mrs. Macbeth, you look lovely. Nice to see you finally got the stains out. Oh, and look, all the girls from Melrose. Hi, Amanda. I'm really glad you got your job back. Okay, um, where to start? extreme possibility that their hands are attached to the body differently to allow for such an angle of strangulation. Or maybe they just have two elbows. Walter, look. 
you're really cute when you stop it. When you play the realm of extreme possibility. This is your stupidest theory to date. Why do you have to be such a f***ing skeptic, Scuttlebutt? I'm sorry. Where are you going? To requisition a car. And probably one of the best titles at this year's Fringe has to be the show called Four Weasels and a Funeral. Very timely indeed, guys. Just quickly introduce yourself, your first name. Sandy. Ken. Ron. <laughs> Matt. Okay, how about a musical excerpt from your show, guys? Okay, okay here we go. Can't do it. I don't want to no. <laughs> okay, one. Okay. Go! One, two, three, three. If I were God, if I were God, then I'd find a way. If he were God, to make it Christmas every day. If he were God, I'd rid the world of mosquitoes and flies. If he were God, a can of Coke would come mixed with rye. If he were God, the work week would be one day long. If he were God, goodbye Nintendo, gonna bring back Paul. If he were God, if he were God, if he were God, if I was God. If I was God, I'd buy a limo and some fancy clothes. If he were God, my chicks would follow me wherever I go. If he were God, I'd go to Disneyland and get him free. If he were God, I'd be the star of every show on TV. If he were God, the Mona Lisa would hang on my wall. If he were God, I'd picture George, Sandy, Ringo, and Paul. If he were God, if he were God, if he were God, if I was God. the mountains and part the sea if he were god I'd do whatever the hell i please if he were god I'd walk around in my underwear if he were god I'd sit my fat ass on the earth like a chair if he were god I'd rename the planet sandy land if he were god I'd have you all in the palm of my hand <gasps> you anymore. Go and gallon. If I were God, I'd learn how to play guitar. If I were... Ron? 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 Three more shows, Ron. Three more shows. Okay, okay. Okay, God. Settle down. Ron, are you alright? Uh, <laughs> Get off. I think we have some casualties. I guess fringe casualties is what we would consider. Come here, guys. Come here. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. Brave new weasels. Now, fellas, you have a great show. I saw it. I loved it. Um, what can people expect to uh, bring away from your show? What will they gain? Uh, a new knowledge of life, learning, and God. <laughs> and when? It's a religious Definitely. thing. Definitely a religious experience. Okay. And uh, tell me, your show tonight is at the Planetarium. What time? Nah, 10.45. Okay, and it's going to be all week. Check out your program. And uh, you have one more line to throw back to Rob, don't you? Yes, Rob, if I was God, I'd have your job. Oh, Rob, there you go. That's entertainment. Ooh, I'm scared. Time for a quick break. <laughs> nice to see so many familiar faces here tonight. Tonight my pick is a gracefully acted play from London, England called The Two Gentlemen of Soho. And what it's about is a young Puritan girl who steals a set of man's clothes and puts them on and goes about London trying to get the answers to a series of questions she's asking. And as you know, John, asking questions can get you into serious trouble. <laughs> what did I do to you? You made me a promise and broke it. I never promised you anything. You offered me your body and you took it away. You stripped me naked. I've been walking the streets in skirts. Well, now you know how it feels to be a woman. Women were designed to wear these things. They're the right shape. You don't look so bad. That is an expression of my natural dignity. No more. You would grace any costume. Well, exactly. The man overcomes his coverings. Oh, you understand me. He's not like that ignorant rabble. I just hate him. I despise him. What did they do to you? Someone pinched my bottom. You laughing at me? I'm not laughing, I'm smiling. I'm impressed. You look great. Oh, shut your mouth. You should show your hair. You see? I'm serious. Don't twist. 
the suspect who's been out at the Fringe Festival for the better part of a week. How you doing, Robert? Well, I'm doing all right. I still got my, my program here, and I've got my bag on my shoulder where it's now glued, and there's some <laughs> Zydeco music in the background. What more do you want on a sunny day? How many plays have you seen? About 40 now. And how many is that at the total? Well, that's, a, that's a, about half, I guess. I mean, I should caution people that when I choose the top 10, that there are another 40 plays I could have seen, and I may well have missed some wonderful things. But among the 40 that I have seen, I had difficulty actually narrowing it down to the 10, and I'm actually lying Softies. because I narrowed it down to 12. <laughs> so there are at least seven or eight more that I could have put on. Yesterday, as an example, Diana, I went to a thing called P.S. Your Cat is Dead, knew nothing about it. It was an absolutely zany and charming comedy that I enjoyed very much, and that's one of the lovely benefits of the fringe sometimes you stumble upon things you have no idea you're going to encounter all right well let's hear it what are your top 12 yeah all right well <laughs> here they go let's start with number 10. <laughs> nice to see so many familiar faces here tonight a tie for 10th spot a package deal from the always talented blue whale theater company from montreal but there's something in your pocket there's nothing in my pocket well, you show me no all right and I'll sit here till you do. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'll see you in two weeks. They're tied for 10th with Elevator, a not-so-fine script, but very fine acting from Meredith McGeechee and Alexis Butler. He provides. He has to. He loves me. He uses you. Oh, not like Dave. You know, I could do it. I could show everybody and just have it. Behind the plate in ninth position is Play Balls from Toronto's Pea Green Productions, a bittersweet comedy about a female umpire. Hey, hey Lucy. What now? Want to play doctor? Doctor? Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> okay. Uh, first, take off your shirt. Okay. <laughs> hey! No way! In the number eight spot, Therapism from Orlando, Florida. A comedy, pretty tough comedy, about a couple in desperate need of therapy. It's a wonderful day, Donovan. Just sing that part. No, it's a great. You are going to love this song. No, no, no one will love it. People just tolerate it like they did at the theater for six weeks straight. It is a dumb, stupid song, and I will not embarrass myself by singing here. At the number seven spot, another draw, X, from Birmingham, England, in which Jill Douse inhabits a number of characters inside an insane asylum in 19th century France. The girl next to me is... She's chewing the end of her pillow. And sobbing. And the other play in seventh spot is Ordinary Days, written and performed by Winnipeg writer Bruce McManus. It's his best play yet, and while his performance is a bit erratic, this play about a playwright who's writing a play is darkly funny. Lillian, sorry about last night. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's... It's the play. Nothing's cooperating. The play isn't cooperating, so my body's not cooperating. The sixth play finish is something totally different. It's a dance performance called Grip by a sixth female dancer, three of whom are also the choreographers, and it's really gutsy dance that somehow is rooted in female experience. I enjoyed it very much and recommend it as something alternative to the normal theater we're seeing here at the Fringe. Number five spot is the Saucy Maiden. That's that Comédie del Arte troupe from Toronto who bring us back to the origins of slapstick. They keep whacking one another with this stick. A very funny, zany play. And the number four spot is called Alice in Wonderland from One World, Theal One World, One World Theater Company in Seattle. This is zany, beautifully visual, and one of the most charming plays here at the Fringe. Robert, I know we've had to use some rather creative editing to sort of keep our, well, keep some of the language out, frankly. Do you have to do that as well when you go to see the plays? Is there a way to know whether it's suitable for the whole family? Yeah, they're actually very good about that, Diana. There are warning languages in the program, as well as at the venue sites themselves. You'll often see a sign saying, content, language content, be careful of what you're going to see. And so if people are careful and look ahead of time, they won't get caught in some of the plays which do have, admittedly, some pretty raw language. There's no question about that. But I guess we should be clear that there are some venues available for the whole family. Yep, there are children's plays here, and there are plays that are called for general audiences. And you can pick and choose and, and find a play that suits your particular uh, taste in theater. There's certainly no problem with that. All right, well, let's hear the rest of the list. All right. In third place is Foresight Theatre from England, with their rich and treacherous musical play called Bodachia, the Red-Bellied Queen, about a Celtic monarch and her daughters who make the avenging angel seem like Mary Poppins. I will give you blood to In 
In second place, the elegant, just right acting of two gentlemen of Soho, a romp through Shakespeare's England where men and women switch clothes and roles. You've got a lovely figure. You think so? And beautiful skin. What do you use on it? Goat's milk with peeled cucumber. You add cucumber? Oh, just a little tiny touch. And then you rub it into your skin? And leave for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you fresh! <laughs> Are you prepared to die? And my choice this year for the best play of the Fringe is the Ghost Light Theatre's production of Hunting Moby Dick. This San Francisco-based company energetically adapts Melville's sprawling novel to the stage. And what a feat it is. They've caught the spirit of the elusive whale in this rich, raucous, and highly intelligent piece of theatre. As they narrate to each other their unholy adventures, their tales of terror told in words of mirth, as the wind howls on, and the sea leaps, and the ship groans and dives and scornfully chants the white... What a collection, Robert. They have nothing in common. It's, it, it's amazing, isn't it? That last piece is really a wonderful. That company from San Francisco bring that difficult, difficult book, Moby Dick, of Herman Melville, Melville to life with theater and mime and dance and text. It's really a tour de force of theater and highly, highly enjoyable in a very small space in the Sonnet Warehouse over there. So it's tight, so I recommend people get tickets as early as possible. Sounds good. Now, we've covered the fringe like a blanket. What else is going on in the city this weekend? Well, you know, the Festival de Voyageurs got a play on as well, and they've got it in a very unique setting, which is Whittier Park, and what they've got is the whole of Port Gibraltar as their stage set. Mogo, will you be able to take care of the family while I'm gone? We can stop. And if a big black bear comes and attacks you like this, ah! what would you do then? I won't bring a gun. It'd be, I shoot him right between the eyes. The Voyageur is a play put together by the Festival du Voyageur, which relives the life of Jean-Baptiste Lajumadet, who was a fur trader in Sarah. So it sort of plays on the humor of the Voyageurs, their courage, their, their history, their love of life, and sort of the, the end of the Voyageur era. I wish you a good hunt, Baptiste, but be careful for God's sake. There's so much fighting in the countryside these days. Don't worry. I'll be careful. So, Diana, that's pretty well it. <laughs> what I want to know is, how come, Diana, you're only talking to him when I've got the free tickets? Well, the uh, fringe tickets, there's no big deal. I've no, 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 they're no, not no. fringe tickets. No, no, no. no. This, <laughs> these are four tickets to Canada's hottest reggae festival. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Black Oram, it's at the Forks this weekend. I know it's not the fringe, but it is, it is big. <laughs> now, of course, we have a bank of operators standing by on this phone number. It's the Boy Scouts of the 107th Bannatine Troop. They are waiting for your call to answer our skill testing question, and we will be giving away four tickets to the first person who can answer this question. Bob Marley had a big hit that Eric Clapton covered. In it, he confessed to shooting somebody. We don't want to know who he shot. We want to know who he didn't shoot. All right, while you're rushing to the phone, here's Ronty Rocky Montague to tell you all about black Arama this year. What, what you can expect if you come to black Arama this weekend at the Forks is the greatest reggae entertainment lineup in Canada and the largest reggae festival in Canada. We're gonna have lots of, lots of talent. We're gonna have Culture Jamaica's premier reggae band. We're gonna have DJ Rick. DJ Ray is a great dancehall DJ for reggae. He has lots of energy, lots of dancing. You have to get into the music when you hear DJ Ray. Carla Marshall is a fantastic reggae artist. She has a beautiful voice. That is why she's the Juno Award female vocalist winner for reggae. <laughs> Rebel Force is a high-energy reggae band that is locally here. They've been going now for about three or four years, and they're exciting to watch as a local reggae band. We're going to have lots of people just around together in harmony, in peace and love with reggae music, because reggae music is a peace and love music. Who uh, Bart Marley didn't shoot? Liberty Dallas. <laughs>
So close. <laughs> so close. Very far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Oklahoma this weekend, Diana. I thought he meant he was really going to Oklahoma. I said, why are you going to Oklahoma? Oh, no, no. Oh, Oklahoma. <laughs> Actually, there'll be two of us. I'm going as well. I think tonight's opening night of their season. All right, Rainbow Stage. You got it. Okay, well, have a good weekend, you guys. All right, well, I'm going to go that way. Thank you. Are you sure I can't have that? Pretty, pretty good guess. Yeah. <laughs> Who didn't he shoot? Who right? didn't he shoot? Fringe Festival, the fringe cream is starting to rise to the top. If you've had a hard time keeping up with the reviews, you're not the only one. Here's uh, three more shows for your unaffected consideration. Let's all throw our money in. <laughs> last night. It contains the work of three young choreo uh, choreographers, and I was particularly impressed by one of the choreographers, uh, Constance Cook, who did that piece and a couple of others that were just amazing. Really uh, sensitive, entertaining, but really fun pieces, too. And Phantom of the Deficit, if you're into city politics, this is the show for you. Very funny. And our fringe bit today on Lombard is... Well, Rob, it was an amazing concert. We're going to have an extended version of it for you in a few moments, along with Street Nick coming up live on Lombard. Well, it's been an amazing concert tour going across the country in the last few days. It's a party featuring the Tragically Hip and seven of their favorite bands. And yesterday, it finally hit Winnipeg. About 17,000 attendees at that uh, concert last night. And I just stood out in the middle of the crowd while the hip was playing, looked around, and all I saw was 17,000 very happy people, very groovy. There was no violence. It was, it was really a great atmosphere, great time. And uh, Derek picked our top three favorites since he was there all day. I was back and forth and back and forth. What were they? Number one, the hip, of course. Number two, in the inbreds. And number three is Luke Traveler. Inbreds are the next best thing coming around. And tonight, we can continue the music with Kim Mitchell. He does a performance at the Rolling Stone Cabaret. Nice, intimate setting to see this artist. There's still tickets available for that. And the Rolling Stone Cafe sneaks open tonight at 7 p.m. And that's a scoop right from the Rolling Stone, guys. You heard it here first. And on to the Fringe Festival. We had a really cute title group here yesterday. It was Four Weasels in a Funeral. Today, we have Street Nicks in Seattle, the group Street Nicks, they're from Saskatoon. They do an a cappella show at the venue. Guys, how about a tune? One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> It was a zombie jamboree. It took place in the New York cemetery. It was a zombie jamboree. It took place in the New York cemetery. Zombies from all over the world. Some of them were British, so we knew this last season was not in our season. They got together and barked and all, and they were singing song by song by song. They were singing song by song by song. 
to organize fun like this for an entire week. 500 volunteers, more than 100 performers. It's so hectic, the boss goes from venue to venue on his bicycle. Every day we've got over 100 shows to take place in eight different venues with 16 different technicians and a huge staff, all, all concentrating on this one amazing effort. Schneider says so far attendance is up by 6% this year at both inside and outside performances. So I want anybody, please, anybody in Winnipeg Fringe Festival land at East San Laurel, please send them over. I need to get free. I need to get free. Thank you. But that isn't the only plea at the exchange. There's the balloon man pitch, the food pitch, and the pitch to win over the audience. This man's been coming to the Fringe since it began eight years ago. What compels you to come back? Um, I guess the variety of performances that you see. A lot of talented people and uh, interesting, uh, I don't know, interesting things to see, I guess. Well, I think it's fabulous. I'm really enjoying myself. The Fringe Festival continues until Sunday. Del Simon, CBC News, Winnipeg. It's a st to see so many familiar faces here tonight. There's only two days left here at the Fringe Festival, and if you've got one play you should see, I'd recommend you go and see a play called X. What it's about is a young girl in late 19th century France who's incarcerated and put in an insane asylum because she's judged to be hysterical. This is a beautifully acted play by Jill Doust from England, and it is a play that I do highly recommend. What do you like?
like some. I'm Genevieve. Would you like to see a photograph? That's me, on the cover. I don't think they've done me justice. Let's face it, these photographers are not real artists. This was taken while I was under hypnosis. They'll have you demonstrating before long. And the Tuesday lectures, of course. There's nothing to worry about. You'll see. I had no clue what she was talking about, but I wasn't about to ask. She was beautiful. I wondered how many people were in love with her. Okay, John, your last chance to see X, and I recommend you go and see it, is, let's see, tomorrow at 6.15, at the main stage at Prairie Theatre Exchange. And after that, that's it for the Fringe Festival for this year. See ya. And that was Robert. That's the latest from the Fringe Festival. You be here. You don't understand, Doctor. And still to come, what's hot at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival this weekend? Robert Enright picks it. The ward of the hysterical women. Whatever that means. I know what a renegade fringer really is, but perhaps you tell me. Well, yes, you know that the fringe is pretty out there. Well, when you have renegade fringers, they've got to be even more out there, right, ladies? <laughs> We've actually got the uh, Beauty Parlor Quartet, otherwise known as Nipples to the Wind, here today. And they're part of a fringe-like show this weekend that isn't officially fringe, right? Mm -hmm. Wh what's the show all about? Well, it's called uh, Beauty and the Beast Within, and it's a feminist... Uh, Women's Cabaret, it's called a Femme Cab. We used to do them a few years ago. We've had a two-year hiatus, and now we're back. But we're on the fringe of the fringe. We're not part of the actual fringe. Okay, so what does that mean to you guys? <laughs> well, being on the fringe of the fringe, it's sort of a growing trend. There, there are um, fringe of the fringe performances. There was one here last year of a Midsummer Night's Dream, and there were some in Edmonton last year as well. Um, basically, the thing is that the fringe format has become a little too limiting for, for all groups. So it used to be that the fringe was a, a free-for-all. It was your chance to do your thing, and you could take your chances and, you know, do your thing. But, but that even the free format of the fringe has become a little bit limiting. So groups like yeah. us are doing a fringe of the fringe, which is a the little wackier. The bigger the festival gets, the more, you know, uh, officialness has to happen. Yeah, so. okay. exactly. Uh, now, what are some of the performers we can see at the fringe cabaret, or at the cabaret this weekend, at the Underground Cafe, right? Yes, at the Underground Cafe. Um, Shauna Dempsey is performing, Shauna Dempsey and Laurie Milan. Um, Laurie Weidenhammer. Laurie Weidenhammer. All right. They're all Laurie Friedman. <laughs> yeah. You have to be named Laurie to be in this cabaret, everybody, okay? That's why everybody else is excluded. <laughs> okay, and there's going to be songs, a little bit of dance, a little bit of uh, performance artists. Performance artists, mm -hmm. theater. Okay. One neat so. thing about the cabaret is that we never know until the first night what it's going to be because we all write our own material and then come together and we see it all for the first time the first night. So tonight will be the first time we see the whole show together. Okay, and what about you guys? Are this the first time the four of you have gotten together for a... No, we, we put ourselves together originally actually for a birthday party. Oh. But then we put together this... The, the group of songs that we do for Testing Ground last year. So we have a, a small repertoire. So okay. we're expanding on it. We have new stuff that no one will have ever seen before. Okay, let's see your stuff. Go ahead. One. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Buddy, I don't know a finer occupation. Matter of fact, neither do I. Then standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go by. I'm the cat, I got the cream. Ow. Haven't got a girl, but I can dream. Haven't got a girl, but I can wish. So it takes me down to Main Street, and that's where I select my imaginary dick. Oh, <laughs> Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Standing on the corner, giving all the girls the eye. 
But if you've got a rich imagination, give it a whirl, give it a try. Try standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go by. Saturday, and I'm so broke. Yeah, right. Couldn't buy a girl a nickel coke. Yeah. Still, I'm living like a millionaire when I take me down to Main Street and review my harem parading for me there. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Standing on the corner, underneath the springtime sky. But you can't go to jail for what you're thinking, or for the ooh. Look in your eye. You're only standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go. <laughs> All right, okay. And you can see the, the barber, sh no, what is it? A beauty parlor quartet, nipples to the wind, at the Underground Cafe tonight at 8.30 and tomorrow night at 8.30. Yes. It's a cabaret, renegade style. Thanks a lot, ladies. Have a great time, okay? And on to the official fringe. Here's a last look at three shows before the final fringe weekend. If you're into city politics, this is definitely the show for you. All three of those shows are actually really strong. Full Figure Theatre Company has two different fringe experiences over the weekend. They have uh, sketch comedy at Brandy's all weekend, and they also have a venue show called Wumpa. It's a comedy with darker undertones at the Prairie Theatre Exchange. And then, of course, Twisted Nipple Improv. Fun guys. Really great, comfortable evening. And, of course, it being Manitoba, there are more. Tonight, Rob, we actually have renegade fringers here. It's an all-female barbershop car. Coming up next, live on Lombard. This guy, uh, right, Kim? That's right. We continue our fringing tonight live on Lombard with a little bit of improv comedy. And who better to do improv comedy but some Canadians, actually, the three Canadians, or two the two the Canadians. We are the, yes, we are the three Canadians. And they're from Calgary, and they're doing the outdoor stage at the Fringe Festival. Guys, what game are you going to play for us? Well, uh, me and Eric are going to attempt to tell a story speaking one word at a time. Right. Oh, so my God, I'm so confused. Let me get out of here, okay? So what we need from you, the assembled masses, is someone to yell out, oh, uh, what is something you would return to the store? Videotape. Videotape. Right. We were going to the entertainment section of the store, and we brought a faulty book on this tape that was bought at the bay and was faulty. So we demanded our money back, but they would not allow it to be returned because it was Disney. And Disney is very taboo. So we said we were going to exhume the master Disney himself. So we went to Neverland and brought our shovel and began digging him up and confronted Disney. And we said, you guy ripped me off. So he gave 
me my five bucks back. And then we left. The moral of this story is whenever you want your money back from Disney Hawk, do Walt himself. Yeah. Thanks. But the funny thing is that Walt Disney is actually in cryogenic freeze at the That's moment. That's right, so you can't so really zoom it's in. It's not a real story. It's just made up. Uh, we did it fast, you know. You have to leave everything you see on television. Is no, that what you're trying to tell us, guys? Here. <laughs> okay, now tell me, um, how do you actually trust each other enough to be able to do something like this? Um, do we, or I can't? How do we? Do you trust? E obviously, you trust each other. Yeah. But like, why? What? What reason has he given you to trust him? I have no other friends. <laughs> I kind of thought that There's might no be the case. Yeah. Okay, now is every show? You know, does it have a formula, or how does it work? Uh, it's uh, basically we have ideas what we're going to do in the show, but it's basically all made up out on the spot. We uh, talk to each other during the show and find out what's the next bit going to be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and are the goggles an imperative part of the show? No, no, they're just they're very imperative. <laughs> they give him his character. They give me my character. You okay. have no character without those no goggles. Character without these goggles. I have no character without his goggles. I'm starting to get nausea. The camera is just going back and forth. <laughs> Stop the damn camera! <laughs> 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 okay, okay, I'm going to tap dance now. <laughs> okay, now we're going to see you at the outdoor stage, guys, right? You're getting a little confused about this television thing, so... <laughs> okay, and here's a couple of other shows to check out at the Fringe. Thanks, guys. And that selection is actually called Jack. It's about a crossdresser. Very interesting show uh, with three choreographers doing the doing the pieces for it. I was particularly impressed by uh, the choreographer Constance Cook. Her she had very fresh. It was entertaining. It was touching. It really was the highlight of the show. So it's really worthwhile if you're into some new. Are you guys behaving? <laughs> new dance. And I am a wild party himself. Kim Mitchell was in Winnipeg last night for a concert at the Rolling Stone Cabaret. Had a chance to chat with Kim about his new Kim Mitchell Greatest Hits album and beyond. Well, the Greatest Hits, I wanted to do that because there's been a half a dozen albums. I've been doing this on my own now for 10 years, away from a group called Max Rose that I used to be with. And they're all the songs that people have been screaming for and jumping up and down when we start. And they walk up to me in shopping malls and at lakes and on beaches and go, oh, I love this song, oh, are you ever, you know. So we just sort of put them all on one disc. Plus we re-recorded a couple things. We recorded a couple new songs. over the winter time um, my record contracts up management publishing all that stuff's like over with at the end of this album so I'm kind of uh, searching sort of at a crossroads sort of you know I'll be standing at the crossroads with nothing on but a glow actually saw him last night at the Rolling Stone cafe opening he was there we couldn't persuade him to do a tune but guys He's a wild party Oh, he is. You guys are a wilder party. No, North got a Polaroid with him, and he is so excited. That's so. the third Canadian. Third yeah. Canadian. Okay, next trip, guys. Oh. Ready? Yes. When you thought the Festival du Voyageur only did their thing in February, the Voyageur has emerged for the summer in the form of a place at Fort Gibraltar. <laughs> you see, Marion, what I couldn't see in Masquinonji? Me. I need space. Lots of space and freedom. Yes, but uh, me, you know, I didn't 
know until I married you that you would bring me way out here to the other end of the world, among these pagans. Ben, what do you mean? Ben, no. When you came back from the Northwest, we all thought you'd grown out of your wanderlust. If I had known... Hey, cut, Marianne. It's in my blood, Wayne. I'm a voyageur. We're actually using a real fort. The, uh, the fort is a reconstruction of the, the actual fort that, was, that stood from 1812 to 1821 at the fork of the two rivers, and we're doing it right here in this setting. So as you walk into the fort, you can really become a voyageur because you can really get into that mood. Everything you will see here is, uh, is relative to that, to that period. And some quick notes about tonight. Uh, there's Jazz on the Rooftop starts at the WAG tonight with Jennifer Hansen. The Morris Stampede, yahoo, starts also tonight. And uh, that goes on throughout the whole weekend. And it's Thursday, so it's Name the Mystery Video Contest brought to you by the Wee Fest and Silver Spike Saloon. Now, if you know anything about country music, listen up. The big Wee Fest weekend happens in the Detroit Lakes on August long. It's an amazing collection of country acts with Vince Gill and Sammy Kershaw, lots of other people. I'm a going to show you a quick video segment from one of the artists performing this year at WeFest. If you can identify the artist, you could win weekend passes. the contest by naming the mystery video performer at the Silver Spike Saloon this week for uh, just doing that you could win four weekend passes to WeFest Silver Spike Saloon there's an extra bonus I have a pair of uh, tickets for the whole weekend of WeFest to give away right now to the seven callers who can name the mystery video contest person <laughs> 947-9613 throw back to Rob guys let's throw, throw back to Rob throw up on Rob hey, hey Rob hey Rob back, 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 to, back to you, to you Rob yeah back at you yeah. <laughs> you guys cut me up Time for one last break. Fringers, get ready, get set. Fringe, the eighth annual Fringe Festival, opened officially at 7 p.m. tonight with the world's shortest parade. You are the one that represents all that is evil. You are the great four. <laughs> okay, a bit of a different parade, but the whole seven minutes of it featured members from 100 out of town and local performing companies taking part in the festival. For the next 10 days, there will be 600 shows in eight venues in downtown Winnipeg. Some good, some not so good, but all there for the taking. It's a theater. It's a smorgasbord. Anything goes. We don't pre-screen anything. We don't know what these artists are going to do. We invite them to Winnipeg to do their art, and they do it marvelously. And, of course, the whole focus of the festival being theater. Here's a few more shows to preview before you head out fringing. Well, I'm my lane. You can be anything you want to be. It's been a long time since you've kissed me like that. Yeah. Richard stands, moves directly to the mirror, is careful to avoid his reflected image, but instead recovers the mirror with a black fabric veil. He moves to Ruby's chair, sits. Ruth crosses to Richard's chair and sits. Ruby clenches eyes closed, three counts. Richard adjusts his underwear. Ruth adjusts her underwear. Let's pretend that for, I was eating mussels for the first time. And without realizing it, I happened to crack this particular one open, or the other three or four which appeared to be in my bowl, and slid it down my throat. Quickly I die, or I'm in the hospital with severe food poisoning. And what happens then, Klein? And another festival, Pop comic Fred Anderson from San Francisco came in uh, to Winnipeg for the Fringe Festival. And with the help of some of our crew and some innocent bystanders, he performed a death-defying act here live on Lombard. Oh, don't get close. Don't get close. Here we go. Get back, lady. Oh, hairspray. Get way back. <laughs> here we go. 